Okay. Before Helvetica, it was confusing. There were distractions. After Helvetica, it was the message. Coke, ice cold, feeling, text, period. The message is received, and that's what we're trying to convey with Metro. You can take the word Helvetica and replace it with the word Sego, and you will feel Metro being ingrained in the way you design your solutions and the way you design your messages as you move forward. So I want you to take that and internalize that first point, Swiss design. Let's move now towards wayfinding. So I had to actually come here and make my way around. I travel a lot. And the first thing I look for when I'm busy is how do I get from point A to B? That's my objective. When you are focused on something, you don't need scenery. I, anybody recognize this map? It's one particular metro map in Holland, so this is Amsterdam. How do I get from the airport to the train station? How do I get from A to B? No landmarks, that's all I need to understand. Now, of course, I need to find my way around, and the first thing I do is I look for things which grab my attention. Take Swiss design, and let's see how that can help me find my way around an airport. Take the clear font face, take the bright colors, the yellow saturated, no distractions. I know where to go. I'm looking for departures, I have an arrow, it goes there. This is more than just signage. This is not like a stop sign or turn left. This is wayfinding, it helps me get from point A to point B. Look at this other picture. It transcends nationalities. I could be in New York here from any country in the world. I'm in Wall Street. There's the number four and the number five. I want to get on those. Look at the world around me rushing by. This photo is using Metro to describe Metro. The world is going by me and I don't want those distractions. I want a clear, concise message. Where am I? Where do I want to go? This is the line I need to catch. Period. I just had to say that once, okay? Because I love the way he says it in that video. I've traveled through numerous airports. Only one photo of these is my own. You can probably spot it right in the middle when I landed in uh, Lithuania's airport. It's all around us. We were gonna call Metro airport. I'm glad we didn't, because it's more than just airports. You can see German systems, saturated colors. You may be starting to feel as designers, uh-oh, you know, Carl from Microsoft is saying we should stick to a typography, we should stick to saturated colors. As designers, you have the ability to move around guidelines, but be very conscious when you move around a guideline that it's strategically really valuable for you to do that. Do I need to kind of change the sharp, crisp, square edges and put rounded edges? Do I really need, you know, to go to a light blue instead of a saturated blue? Is it gonna really change the message in a way that I want? Or am I kind of, you know, interfering with the message? And this really brings me very nicely to Bauhaus. Now Bauhaus is a modern way of thinking. It's not a modern invention, but when you think of where Bauhaus came from in the 20s, Germany needed to be competitive. They, they built a school which trained you in the thought around construction. You studied materials, you studied what they could do, and then you used those materials to build things. But at the heart of what you built was not what it would look like, that is a designer's job, and that is an important role. But what will its function be? So the form will follow function under Bauhaus. And it allows you to create this ability to mass produce things, because the function is what's important, and the form will flow. And you can still have great artistic ability, even in this world. Look at that chair, look at that teapot. The teapot is perfectly balanced. It's fit for function because the handle is balanced with the actual uh, curvature of the base. It works as a teapot, but I can do amazing creative things around the function which give it form. And it's timeless. A lot of this stuff is still fashionable. 
The saturated colors are in here again as well. The buildings we build are not Victorian, Baroque, antiquated fashion statements. They are modern and timeless. People will want to live in the building on the right a lot longer than they will want to live on the building on the left, most likely. So yes, the function is to build a house which has room, which lets light in, not to put adornments on, not to put wood carvings on there, because those will only serve to detract from the message which I want to, to display, that this is a home where somebody needs to live. So again, we've taken two concepts, let's move to motion. motion I like to think of, you know, can you create emotion through motion? When you take something which is static, that's a, a good start already. And it's tough to actually create motion in static text, in static typography, but we can do that. But we can also leverage graphic designers and we can also leverage our developers as well. We need to work together when we leverage emotion to create um, 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 motion in our designs. So, what Microsoft did is we worked with um, the Office Labs, and I'm just going to stop talking here and let you listen to this. So, can we jump forwards a little? I think we can just jump forwards. This is actually starting a little bit. designed way before Metro existed, we actually took a concept where we would say, listen, let's take clear typography, let's take these great saturated colors, let's take that typography, and let's build a concept. And Metro drew very much on the work that the Microsoft Office Labs division did to build this conceptual video. And we're seeing that a lot of this um, design is actually now incorporated into our products. We are putting this into Metro to make it something real. You see this in some of the products I'm going to show you as we move through the rest of the presentation. So Microsoft took a few steps at working with motion to create emotion. The surface, when you touch it, you get a response through motion which invokes this feeling of touching water. I'm using motion to create something that draws me into the product, something that makes me want to use the product. The way we can move data around, we've seen this in movies, Minority of Report, Iron Man, we move information around and this is what we want to do with the motion. We want to remove the distractions, we want to make the user feel like this is a natural interaction with the data not with the device, as we saw in the previous presentation, about the keyboard and the mouse becoming antiquated. And Surface really did elevate this, you know, um, this experience to immerse the user through touch. Again, we use motion to signify subtleties. We don't want to do this too fast. We don't want to do this too obvious. We need to make sure that the user feels this fluidity of navigating through the data, which makes him feel he's moving from one task to the other. I'm about to delve into that email. That dimple is what actually tells me that. So he feels responsiveness from the system. So of course we tie all of this together. We tie it together because, you know, Bauhaus is lending from Swiss design. We're taking the motion in the wayfinding. We're telling people this is how you get from point A to B. We're using arrows and direction. It's all important and it's all intertwined with one another. And we need balance. 
We need these five principles to make sure we maintain balance. If we don't maintain balance, we fall onto one side and we become you know, too heavy on the, on the wayfinding and not enough content, for example, or too heavy on the, on the motion and then people get dizzy because it's too fast, it's too quick, it's too much to follow. So Microsoft has been on a journey and I'm going to have a very, very quick journey where we talk about what was life like before Metro and, you know, life back in the 1990s, we had buttons. Oh, they're squares. That's Metro. No, it's not Metro. They're buttons. It's, it's things getting in the way. Those are navigational means, which I don't need all the time. How many times am I going to need that arrow in my face when I'm reading about Native American Indians? So we elevated the content. At this stage, we said, listen, the user is reading. He wants content. And we're going to revisit this later on. We're going to say, how can we present information to the user using the clear typographic styles of Swiss design? How can we make sure that what the user wants, using Bauhaus principles, is there? We may not be seeing so much wayfinding at this point. This is going to come along as we move. So Microsoft has worked with a lot of different products where you start to see the origins of Metro appearing. You know, Windows Media Center with its bold graphics, with you know, big, immersive HD TV displays. How is this technology going to work across different devices to give me the experience which blends without me actually feeling I've moved from one device to the other? We worked with Xbox to have this notion of motion moving across from one um, activity to another, these hubs of activity. We look at Zoom again. We can see typography in here. So I can see Jay-Z over there. That is kind of like the essence of that particular screen that I'm working on. And this is what I want to be clear and crystal and concise when I deliver this message of the screen that the user is on. So we took a journey. And back with Windows 7, we started to coin the word modern. This was a great start for us. Okay? We moved very, very quickly forwards um, to actually build a design document which we released to actually say, listen, these are the principles of Metro. And lots of people read that and Microsoft started to employ it in new products which we started to build. And those new products which we started to build started to get us noticed. And getting noticed is what we wanted, because getting noticed means getting sticky. Getting sticky means getting in people's faces. Getting in people's faces means we are relevant. And people started coming up with comments like, wow, three devices, cohesive user experience. Wow, I can actually move from one device to another and actually carry on using what I've already learned. It allows me to drop that threshold of taking on a new technology and now I can start using my knowledge across multiple devices. I'm actually fitting things in now below the curve because what I learn in one app travels across the experience on that device, travels across devices. And this is where we stand today. This is where we stand with Metro. The ability to take the idiosyncrasies of a particular device I mean, a, a phone is much smaller than my HDTV at home, which is 52 inches. It's much s smaller than perhaps my laptop or my touch. But when I use the device, I feel comfortable, I feel safe, I feel the ability to experiment because I'm familiar with it. So I embrace that technology because it's frequent and familiar to me. And this is what we want to achieve. So we, we, need to, we need to squeeze some essence. We need to get five essence um, squeezed out of this in the, last, uh, in the last 10 minutes of this presentation. And I want you to take these away with you. When I built these slides with the local Microsoft team yesterday, we spent eight hours taking away things till what we felt was perfect, I hope. Okay, we'll soon find out when you rate this session. But perfection is achieved when not when there's nothing left to add, when there's nothing left to remove. Be brutal, fierce reduction. Give it to somebody else, tell them to criticize it and remove, remove, remove until only the message is left. Then you have succeeded in becoming perfect because you know, if you take anything else away, you're gonna lose the message and that's not what you want. So 
we need to keep some principles. We need to build a guide so you can spec what Metro is. We need to communicate our message of Metro to you. How can you take Metro and implement it if you don't know what it is? I want to give you some key principles when you are building solutions, when you are designing, when you are thinking of ideas. Keep these principles in mind and you will be Metro. And you will be sticky and concise and you will be creating this fresh new image of yourself. We take pride in craftsmanship. Developers unfortunately don't often take pride in craftsmanship. When I used to teach IT, they used to build these great solutions, but then you'd look at the user interface and you'd think, oh my god, it's one pixel out. And the developer would say, oh, so what? No, oh, one pixel is one pixel. We talk about sweating the pixels, full screen bleed of the actual graphics here. I want to make sure everything is just right, everything is aligned. It gives me stability. If I sweat that extra mile, people are going to feel the quality coming out of the product you build. Because you've taken that hard work to sweat those pixels. We create symmetry. We take the Swiss design and we make sure that you know, there's a balance between graphics and text, between the header and the subtext. We hang everything on a grid. Pre computer era, taking a newspaper. There's a grid, everything is hanging on a grid. It may look messy, but it's hanging on a grid. We elevate the content with IT. It's giving us the ability to make our message clearer, but we're hanging on a grid. It gives us structure. It helps us stand upright. If we don't have a grid, then it's gonna be tricky. I'm not going to talk too much about grids because we do have Windows sessions um, from a colleague of mine uh, running in parallel after this and I urge you to go and experiment and understand the design principles of Metro when we talk about you know, how did we come up with this grid system, how did we come up with the number of units, why 20 by 20, why are we putting gutter space, we're allowing the content to breathe. We want the user to see the content. We want him to know where he is by having a specific gutter space. And you can put silhouettes behind and you can make these subtle changes to give your application a feel that it belongs to you. Your logos have place, your corporate identities have place in Metro. You can choose those colors and you can use them inside your Metro design as well. And everything just lines up. Everything just looks great because this is why we've invested in this grid to help you um, build that and give yourself some framework. Making things fast and fluid. Um, I have to be a bit fast and fluid here. Uh, we need to be able to respond to touch. If any of you have used a Windows device, you will start to notice with Windows 8 and Windows Phone, especially on Nokia, that pixels flow under your fingers. You know, you're in control when that happens. When you drag your finger across something and the icon is here and your finger is there, you're not in control. You want something fast and fluid, something that is responsive to you. It's immersive, it's compelling, it makes you want to use it. We did a lot of research. US military data gave us the ability to help figure out where to put things. This is common human computer interaction knowledge here, that putting things which are within reach is great because the user can you know, hold this device in two hands and use his fingers, or thumbs in this case, to get at the split keyboard. So you will see that this is embedded into the operating system. And the information I want to read is going to be outside of the finger reach because I will probably bring in the controls in that area where the user needs to command. These commanding services do things. Those are going to take that pre preference because that is where the user can reach them. So we talk about being digitally authentic. This is a hard one to describe because given computers we can do anything nowadays. We can put glows, effects, we can make shadows, we can make it look like wood. But do we really want to do that? Do we want to convey the message clear and concise? And another area where digitally authentic becomes rather interesting is when you think about our digital natives, our kids. This is a very short story. This particular kid saw planes flying overhead and it shocked him and his father. But when the father stood up and looked at the kid. Do you know what the kid's first reaction was? Dad, press rewind. 
he's grown up in a digital age where information is at his control, when he wants, where he wants. He thinks he can rewind reality. This is being digitally authentic, harnessing that power and allowing the, the user to realize that this is what he can now do on these devices. This is what he can do with your design and with your, with your creation. You need to do more with less. So cut the chrome. Cut from the context to the content. And I'm going to go straight into this. Look at that great picture with that nice gold frame. Isn't that distracting? Isn't that pl p perspex in front distracting? Look at the right where the content is king. Anybody who's blog writing here, take this even into the audio side. Take this into the visual side. I want to be in that content. The content is king, not the adornments. This is Bauhaus again. So we've taken a Bauhaus principle and said, you know, focus on the content. Get rid of the distractions. Make sure you do that. The last of the fifth principle, this is the last one. How do we win as one? So wait a minute, a guy from Microsoft is saying, you need me to collaborate with other people. Why? Because one plus one equals more than the sum of the parts. We heard Jimmy Wales talk about it. I heard it in a number of, of, of uh, presentations today. If we remove redundancy, people will learn quicker. If we remove redundancy, people will use your app more often. If my app can be used with somebody else's app, if the way I work together works, then I have just increased the sum of the two efforts individually. Think when you walk into your cars, you take a device, it connects to the car, the phone numbers are in your car, you take a phone call, you walk out of that car, you carry on with the phone call. That's two devices winning as one. They talk to one another, they work together. It's interoperability, yes. It's all about talking the same language. This is how we win as one. So a few examples, and I'm really getting close to time here. Some applications of Metro, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I like to call it. Uh, some distinctively Metro situations where you can go and have a look, look at Zoom, look at the way we have you know, clear typography, white space, the content can breathe. Nice, clear visuals, crisp visuals. I need to go into denser information, I use tiles. I don't just put information in tiles. Tiles let me put things into perspective. It allows me to work with lots of data and navigate across lots of data because I can stack it up. Look at the um, Windows Phone. Distinctively Metro again. But there's little round, round circles, golf balls. Those golf balls are not round dots pretending to be round dots. This makes me think, this is an app about golf. I'm going to remember this as an app about golf. Even though the content is king, I've got these subtleties in there. And this is what's really important to me. So I am going to literally cut to some other examples, uh, which are not so great. So we gave some of our uh, Metro principles to designers. And what they came up with was this. Yeah, it's Metro. It's got boxes. But it's got no motion. It's got no soul. It's got no heart. It's not communicating anything to me. It's noisy. It's claustrophobic. The content doesn't breathe. So it looks like Metro, but it isn't Metro. So you have to be very, very careful and cognizant of that. Oops. I knew I'd get your attention. I'm running Windows 8. This is not possible. This is not Metro. This is a Windows 7 screen. Come on. This is not Metro because it's not clear and typographic. This is what it looks like. Now you know it's fake. This is what it looks like in Windows 8. It's got humor. It's telling me, hey, we're dealing with it. You feel safer. I hope you feel safer. We're dealing with it, okay? Your system will resume in five seconds, and we will boot in five seconds. And I am out of time. So with that, I really hope you've taken away some key principles. I don't know if we have time for questions, or am I really out of time? I've got a few questions. Okay, so that was me. That was Metro. This was Microsoft. I hope you remember something. Wow, brutal reduction.
they have online viewers and they have left you a few questions. So one okay. of them was, what do you think about the future of computer mouse? The future of the computer mouse? Well, if we talk about Windows 8, it's embracing keyboard, touch, and mouse, and stylus. There's still a place for it. There's still people who are accustomed to it. Um, as one of the previous presenters said, there will be people who grow up wondering what does a telephone look like, and they will wonder what does a mouse look like. Um, we are innovating on the software side, we are innovating on the hardware side. Um, we are seeing immersive solutions coming about, but there's still a place for mouse, and we're still embracing that, and we want to give the users choice. Um, I cannot see the future of the mouse. I'd love to say there will be a mouse, or it will be a different type of mouse, but uh, I think that would be a, a very silly thing to do if I tried to. Um, all I can say is, yes, we're embracing the mouse, it's still here today, it still works, and it has its place. Uh, what do you think about Metro users' usage on device design? User experience is not only on screen, but everything has to work together. So is that a question or a statement? <laughs> Both, I guess. So <laughs> Mainly usage on device design. So usage on, on, on device design. Well, there's a certain amount of ergonomics which go into the device design, and uh, Microsoft has come up with you know, some devices which are really ergonomically designed and fit for purpose. The Arc Mouse, for example, uh, looking at the phone, looking at the slate. We work very hard with manufacturers who build these devices as well. So we will work with, um, with OEMs who will build the new types of devices um, which will enable touch, which will enable us to have this convertible experience across devices. So we will, we will work with these people to you know, create that first class user experience through those devices. And I think we are very cognizant of the fact that you know, a great experience is made by a great device. So having a great operating system on top of a great device with great ergonomics, which is fit for purpose, is pretty much what we've embraced inside Metro. So having a look at that data which shows the, the thumb placements is already showing we're taking that data and putting it onto the software side as well. Thank you for the answers and we have a little present for you. Wow, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.